If you've watched my channel for very long, you might have noticed that I'm actually a big fan of very old vintage steam railroads. I'm mostly into stuff from before the 1900s, so all the Victorian era stuff. And my favorite thing of all, though, is narrow gauge railroads. So that is a term that not very many people have heard. And narrow gauge basically, if I were to describe it, the standard gauge that you see of railroads around the United States and Canada today is what we call standard gauge. It means that the rails, the, the width or gauge apart is four feet, eight and a half inches apart. And that is basically a sweet spot that we on the uh, continent of North America have decided is good for us. That, that works for us in terms of how big the train should be, uh, how their balance works out, you know, when it comes to their weight distribution, all that stuff. So that is a standard gauge that we have chosen. But in, at least in the United States' past, we have had narrow gauge railroads where the rails are actually closer together than that. And there are various reasons why we've had narrow gauge railroads, and many still exist today. Some of them are heritage railroads, and I believe a couple of them are still operational railroads. So what are the reasons for having narrow gauge railroads? Well, keep in mind, I'm not gonna list all of them here. There are plenty of benefits to having a narrow gauge railroad, but essentially they usually can get around tighter turns than a standard gauge locomotive that helps with uh, very difficult terrain, as well as the fact that with the cars and the engines and everything being smaller, they are easier to maintain and handle with a, a smaller railroad line. So let's say you have a small freight operation out in the middle of nowhere, and you don't need to deliver all that freight to the other parts of the country yourself. You only need to deliver it to another railroad which can haul that stuff. Instead of building a massive, expensive standard gauge system, you could actually save money by building a smaller system uh, with smaller cars, smaller locomotives, narrower rails that have tighter turns, everything like that. And you can actually deliver your freight to another company that will take that freight on larger trains and disperse it across the country or across the continent. And part of saving those expenses is the track itself. So the rails are narrower because that's less of a footprint you have to carve out of the earth to maintain. So that means bridges can be less expensive, believe it or not, because you're using less material. Uh, that can mean that, um, that carving through mountains can be cheaper because that's less earth you have to carve through uh, since your trains are smaller. And, but that is also interesting because if you look at heritage railroads like the Wickasset, Waterville, and Farmington Railroad in Maine, they have a two foot narrow gauge line. That means that the rails are only two feet apart as opposed to the four feet, eight and a half inches of standard gauge. You'll also notice that their engines are smaller, their cars are smaller. But the terrain that they run on is, aside from the, the slightly sloping hills, is pretty flat. There's no mountains that it has to really cross through. So in that case, you can assume that the reason why the, the railroad was narrow gauge and with smaller parts, uh, smaller cars, smaller locomotives, was for cost. It was to save on money because they're not transporting a whole lot and they're probably not doing it that frequently, so they didn't need such massive equipment. And probably they had less people working on the railroad, so having smaller equipment is easier to maintain. But essentially, if you look at the Durango and Silverton Railroad, it's narrow gauge, but the engines are massive. Or they can be small, but most of their engines are massive. They're 282s, Mikados. So anyway, they're different forms um, of names for those engines, but they're huge engines, yet they're running on these narrow tracks. 
And even the cars themselves are not much smaller than standard gauge cars. They have these passenger cars and, and freight cars and stuff. They're not much smaller than standard gauge. So why are the rails so narrow? Well, again, it goes down, it comes back to the fact that they had a lot of freight and passengers to carry, but it was probably cheaper to build narrow gauge through the mountain range because of the fact that you don't have to carve out as much earth. Like I said, the less materials you use, the, the cheaper it is. And so again, it comes down to what the railroad needs. So that is what a narrow gauge railroad is. You can see there are plenty of uses for it. And so when people ask me, what's your favorite kind of railroad and, you know, and stuff like that, I like the stuff from before the 1900s that was narrow gauge. I just love it. Um, but another example of a type of narrow gauge line was used in the American South, plantation railroads, actually. So if there was sugarcane plantations or cotton plantations, uh, they would need to sometimes transport all of their supplies to a nearby major railroad line. And so the owners of those plantations might actually shell out the money to build a narrow gauge railroad. Um, and so you'll see these tiny little steam locomotives. Some of them are rather beautiful, pulling these large trains with cotton and sugar cane and all that other stuff that they used to grow there. So that's another example of narrow gauge. And I don't know why, but I just love narrow gauge railroads a lot more than typical standard gauge, especially if the cars and the engines are really small. I don't know what it is. I guess it just fascinates me that some of these these small little steam locomotives can haul so much weight. And one of my favorite steam railroads in this whole wide world is actually the Disneyland Railroad. Uh, the interesting thing about that railroad, and I have a video series that's four videos long, all about the history and the design and construction of the Disneyland Railroad. It's very fascinating. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch it. But essentially, Walt Disney when he was designing Disneyland, he was such a train fanatic, he wanted, he always wanted his park, no matter what design it came out to be, he wanted his park to be surrounded by a railroad. There was times where he thought about putting in a standard gauge railroad, um, and then there was times where he thought about putting in a miniature railroad that you can straddle and sit on, and it would go around the park. Eventually, they, the Imagineers and Walt Disney, they kind of met in the middle and decided to build a miniature railroad that ran on three foot narrow gauge rails. In case you're wondering, three foot narrow gauge is the most common narrow gauge in the United States. So while there are two foot railroads and there's even one foot railroads, the most common was three foot narrow gauge. But anyway, originally the Disneyland Railroad was built to be miniature. So their original freight train and their original passenger train, which included the engines as well, were all five-eighths scale, which is closer to three-quarters of real size. So everything was actually scaled down to be miniature. Even the little brake wheels that operated the brakes on the trains were scaled down. So everything was miniature in the early days. But as the park grew and they needed more, more trains to handle the crowds, they actually went and acquired old plantation locomotives. One of the first locomotives they acquired was their number three Fred Gurley engine, but it hauled sugarcane in the South. And it, it was this tiny little Forney style engine and it ran on three foot narrow gauge rails. So they chose that because it already existed. It was cheaper than building another locomotive from scratch like they already did with the first two. Um, it wasn't necessarily miniature, it was life size scale, but it was narrow gauge, so it ran on smaller tracks and the engine itself was smaller. So they chose to use that. All the, all the rolling stock or the cars or whatever you wanna call them, the things that you sit on on the train as a passenger, all those, even to this day, are still miniature scale. But they do have three locomotives now out of their five that are full scale locomotives but they're small because they're narrow gauge. So whether it's a miniature railroad or it's a narrow gauge railroad from plantations or whatever, 
I, I like narrow gauge. I don't know what it is. I just, I just love the idea that these tiny little engines can haul all this weight and all these passengers and stuff. It's really quite fascinating to me. But before I go off on a rant, I'm gonna end the video here. I just wanted to explain briefly what narrow gauge is and why they use it for people who've probably never even heard of narrow gauge before. So anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting my channel by either signing up for my Patreon or to my YouTube memberships. That way you can get exclusive perks in return. Links are in the description below. Thank you and I'll see you next time.